today I was telling him that we have moved from Benny Edwards right brain thinking to my book that I published in Joy and Health and Happiness. Then I changed from that to Joy Score. And Joy Score, when we published, had mind, body, and life as three domains. And you know, it's so interesting that almost for 30 years now, I have been constantly learning about joy. I knew about joy 30 years ago, but I have continued to learn more and more and more. And now the three domains, instead of being mind, body, and life, they are mind, health, and success. So I said, Dennis, we need your help. I gave him the book from Barry Edwards to look at it and then give us some feedback as to what we need to do because our book is already outdated. And this is something very interesting about design. Uh, in late 80s, I was the delegation for design conference in um, uh, what's the place where CNN headquarters are? Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. So I talked about design, and the best thing I could explain was that any time you find something working, functioning, it's obsolete. Because any time you reach a point of something like, you know, if you have an iPhone, if it's working, it's obsolete because they got three other models ahead of it. So this is how design works. And based on that concept, I won the design co uh, competition for Europlex because we researched uh, every uh, cinemaplex in the world and we put it in the conference room. And I, I said, look, this is what we can't do because it's already done. So that's where we are. We've kind of published a book, published an app, and I feel they're both obsolete. <laughs> so, back to you. Okay. But how does Dennis fit into all? Do you agree with this, Dennis, and that when a building is built that it's already obsolete? And no, I don't. I think in terms of his frame of reference, in terms of being something being obsolete, it may be per his perception that something's obsolete. But someone new who has not been introduced to, like, for example, the app or the book, you know, it's it not. Might, might introduce new thinking yeah. or a new concept to them, which, therefore, it's not obsolete. Right. You know. Right. In my way of thinking, I mean. Right. I mean, I, being a professor, we use books all the time that get updated, but the updates are very minimal just because news happens, society changes, cultural, cultural ideas change, things like that. But still, the basic building blocks of the book still remain the same. Yeah. Isn't that the truth with design? Absolutely. I mean, you can only... Well, uh, design is a slightly unique profession. We're dealing with ideas and concepts and technologies. So when you look at a product and you see it functioning, working in full scale, meaning there is time to move on to the next step. So when you're done with a project, are you already saying, okay, how am I going to improve the next building? Absolutely. You are. You're, you know, it's so interesting you asked me that question. So all my life as an architect, every few years I got bored with what I was doing because I had excelled it. So whatever it was I was focusing on, excelling in, I feel this is it. We're done. We got to move on to something new next. And that's what I happen with, even in terms of my businesses. I moved from architecture to teaching to industrial companies to 
on and on and on and now I'm doing an app because I have no education or background in developing an app but I know everything about it now. So this is maybe the fifth or the sixth major transformation in my life. In regards to Joy Score, are you saying like now that the app is out and the book is complete that there's more information you want to share with people to yeah. take a yeah. See, you know, for instance, I'll give you an example. Okay, we talked about body. Okay, five years ago, I introduced the concept of microbiome, inflammation. You know, those are the concepts which are predictive health and human science. You know, in the past, medicine was practiced being reactive. You got sick, you go to the doctor, doctor gave you a prescription. If it worked, it worked. If not, go back. If you didn't diet, <laughs> you get a new prescription. <laughs> now, with microbiome research, inflammation, and uh, strands, you know, there are a lot of analytical uh, uh, tests now which show you how to predict your health. So instead of living in the past, you live in the future. So now I realize that my philosophical view on body, which I started five years ago, is outdated. So health is now more predictive. The concept of getting sick is not acceptable. You have to be ahead of getting sick and figure out how not to get sick. And that's what I'm dealing with in terms of my second domain which is health not body anymore and once you have learned how to deal with your mind and your health the next you achieve is success which everybody wants right. that's you know if anyone out there lives and breathes they want to be successful and that's what this app is supposed to help people achieve success so anyway it has changed over the years and that's where we are today Dennis, let me come back to you because you're a graphic designer. I was. You were. <laughs> what changes, you know, Dr. Joy talks about revisions and changes and things like that. Did you see that same sort of thing when you were doing graphic design? Has it really changed that much over the years or are you still using the typefaces that you know will appeal well, to graphic, people? Graphic design has evolved like everything else. Um, you know, but type type styles are are timeless in in the sense of their design. Uh, there are classical type styles that are used. Uh, serif faces. Uh, the book that Betty Edwards uh, wrote is is printed with a serif face font. And whomever designed it, she alluded to that person. But um, you know, all that stuff comes about. In terms of his discussion about architecture, architectures, architecture can be timeless. The design of an automobile can be timeless in terms of its aesthetic quality. And so for me, uh, when you, somebody says it's architecture is obsolete or, you know, automobiles are obsolete, they may be in the frame of reference of 10 or 100 years, 50 or 100 years from now, but the reality is that the design, the aesthetic design of a building, the aesthetic design of a of a automobile or a graphically designed uh, book, for example, uh, there's beauty in its design, and if there's beauty in its design, uh, it's a timeless, it's a timeless object. It's timeless in its value because it will always retain that beauty. Architecture, the Taj Mahal from his home country is a timeless expression of architecture. It's a one of a kind and it will always be that until it crumbles to dust at some point in time, if, if that ever happens. Right. That's a very good example Dennis took of a piece of architecture which has lived for so long and would live forever and would not change. You know, is my statement about anything you see is obsolete is proven wrong by his example. 
is not true. Maybe products, you know, if you're looking at an iPhone or a uh, smartphone, maybe, because when iPhone is released, they already have three more models being worked on to release, and this is how they make money. Right. <laughs> but, right. But the idea of that anything you see and works is obsolete is not necessarily true. Well, alluding to that, the um, the pyramids in Egypt. Yeah. How old are they? They're uh, crumbling. Right. Due to the elements and and progress of time, but architecturally, it's it's a valid design. Yeah. It's been repeated here at Cal State Long Beach yeah. on the. Long Beach campus with their sports auditorium. It's also been repeated again in Las Vegas, one of the casinos in Las Vegas. Right. Um, so, I mean, a pyramidal structure will always be, uh, uh, you know, have its its value as a design. Right. So. As far as type is concerned, though, there have now been studies talking about people looking at apps and reading stories on their phones, there are certain typefaces that are more effective with people who are over the age of 35 than there are with people who are younger than 35. And so, I mean, would you ever, could you ever imagine a can of Coca-Cola with them ever changing their, that, that, Logo. Typeface that has yeah has, that has been as long as the as as well, that's the, not as a good example. Coca Cola is not a good example. Why because, not? Because it's a it's a product. I know, but it's an image or or what you see there is implanted in your mind. You know, like logos and things of that nature are just universal. You know, Coca Cola. That's not a, it's not a typeface, is it? Coca-Cola is a trademark. It's, yeah, it's, it's a derived trademark. from a typeface, right. but it's a brand. Right. And it it's they they did try to change it at one point in time where they went to a different look, but they always come back to the original brand. Yeah. Pepsi has changed its type yes. multiple times. Pepsi NBC has, yeah. has changed yes. its face. Yeah. 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 In fact, um, you were saying about the ages, and Dennis and I have had these discussions on our app because uh, some of the type phases are not appropriate to be able to read clearly. Exactly. The size, the font. The spacing between the lines. Exactly. All you of know, that. All those things are critical. And our designers who are doing the app and our lead graphic designer doesn't understand all that. It takes someone like Dennis to be able to comprehend that and say, hey, this is wrong, you know, <laughs> and we got to change. Right. I mean, but that's the nature of things, you know. Exactly. 